Over the last year or so, I've been using the iPad more than I ever thought I would. Apple's continued updates to the device has made it a powerhouse in some aspects and kind of confusing in others. But today I wanted to go over the best accessories, tips and tricks, my favorite apps, and some thought experiments. But more than anything, I just wanted to show you how you can get the most out of your iPad. So let's get right into it. A good place to start with your iPad is your home screens. This is where you see everything, so making it work for you is well worth your time. Something I like to do is to implement different layouts depending on if you're in portrait or landscape mode. Doing this is really, really simple. Just move your apps and widgets around in that orientation and it will stay whenever you go back into that orientation. So you can make a layout for portrait and then one for landscape. I'm also a really huge fan of having different home screens using the shortcuts widget. This allows me to switch screens with the touch of a button. I've got one for productivity, I've got one for gaming, and I've got one that just brings me home. And I've also got one which launches into my favorite lo-fi station. I made these using focus modes, you can set these up up in your settings and then turn them into shortcuts and then you can place them on your home screen. I've got a video on how I sorted all of that so I'll link it below but this is one of my favorite things Apple did over the last year with the iPad and it's well worth looking at. If there's something I've loved about using the iPad over the last year, it's having it in a stand next to my desktop setup. And I think if you have an 11 inch iPad or bigger, then this is definitely worth giving a go. The stand I have here is from Charge M Pro. It's magnetic, so the iPad snaps on and off really easily. And it kind of looks like an Apple product too, which is great. I generally use this so I can have anything I need up on the iPad while I'm working. That could be notes, my to-do list, Notion, Pinterest, or even just YouTube. It's been like this really nice productivity boost and it allows me direct access to iPad apps while I'm on my desktop, which I really like. However, if you are iPad only, it's also nice to have a stand to pair it with a keyboard and a little mouse or something like that so you're not hunched over it like a laptop all the time which is just going to give you a nicer experience too. Not to mention while it's sitting next to your monitor, if you have a Mac, you can use it with universal control, which brings me to my next point. Basically, universal control allows you to control and use your iPad with whatever keyboard or mouse you're using for your Mac, or even vice versa. I mainly use it combined with my Mac Studio on my desktop setup, and it allows me direct access to my iPad without even lifting a finger. I really love it and it's kind of changed how I work in general, bringing the iPad into pretty much everything I do. It also lets you transfer files between the Mac and the iPad seamlessly just by dragging it, which is really, really cool and actually really useful too. My entire desk setup is kind of built around that feature because I love it so much. And if you want more details, I of course have a video on it, so I'll link that below too. Moving on from there, if you are lucky enough to own one of the M1 powered iPads, such as the 2022 Air model or the M1 Pro or the M2 Pro, then you've got access to full external monitor support too. And for those of you looking to turn the iPad into a laptop or a desktop replacement, you'll likely really enjoy this. To get the connection sorted, you just need to connect to a monitor via the USB-C plug on the iPad while you've got a keyboard and mouse paired to it too. Then you'll be greeted with a full desktop version of iPadOS, which means you can have true multitasking with floating windows in a similar vein to macOS or Windows, albeit with some caveats. The release of this external monitor feature has been pretty spotty though. The beta releases of it were quite buggy and really messy and kind of difficult to use. And it even got to the point where Apple just delayed the feature outright. But it is here now. And if you work in research based areas where you're in the browser a lot, or if you're using kind of standard iPad apps to get your work done, then you can actually get a really good experience on here. There's still a lot to be desired and I don't think Stage Manager is quite there yet, but this is absolutely worth checking out if you're on one of the higher end iPads. If you're looking at speeding up the way you use the iPad, then getting to know the OS with some hidden tips and tricks is totally worth it. I do have an entire video on this and on pencil tips and tricks too, so I'll link that below, of course. But here's a couple of my favorites that I use every day. You can copy and paste much faster by using three fingers on the iPad. Simply highlight what you want to copy, then pinch in with three fingers. And then to paste it, simply pinch outward with three fingers somewhere else. An extra tip here is if you have handoff set up on your iPhone, you can pinch outwards on there with three fingers and it will paste too, which is really awesome. 
And when I'm using the pencil, I'll very often take a screenshot by swiping up from the bottom left, which allows you to immediately mark it up if you need to. Again, super useful. There's so many hidden things here that Apple doesn't really shout about, so be sure to check out my video on all of those. On that Apple Pencil base note too, and I've honestly said this before, but I think investing in a keyboard and pencil for the iPad is really worthwhile. Both products can really open up what you do with an iPad. If you can, Apple's Magic Keyboard and Pencil generally give you the best experience, but they are expensive. There's no getting around that. But luckily there are other options. Logitech makes some really good stuff like the Crayon and Combo keyboards. And there's a million other little keyboard options out there that will give you that more laptop-like experience. For me, the keyboard is perfect when working away from the office. It allows me to get a lot more stuff done than the on-screen one ever could. And despite not being an artist in the traditional sense, the pencil is perfect for sketching, taking notes, and having finer control over the entire iPad system. It's absolutely an investment for sure, but I really do think these accessories are worth getting into. As with any piece of tech, software made specifically for it can really show what it's capable of and trying out some more professional level applications for the iPad is totally worth your time. Some of my favorites in those areas are Lightroom. I use this to edit all of my photography. So everything you see on my Instagram, everything you see on Twitter and all the places like that has been edited pretty much in the iPad app with the pencil to get a bit of finer control over it. I use Notion a lot and I know a lot of people don't like Notion on the iPad, but I still use it a huge amount on here. It's my go-to app for organizing myself and everything on this entire YouTube channel. GoodNotes 5 is still my top tier note-taking app, but there are a bunch of equally good ones out there. Procreate is where many things start for me on iPad, from thumbnail designs to wallpaper ideas. It's also one of the best showcases of the Apple Pencil if you're into making digital art, so that's definitely worth checking out. Freeform is Apple's new app for iPad, which is basically a giant whiteboard that you can collaborate with people on. And from what I've used so far, it's awesome if you love having a huge never-ending canvas to kind of sketch out ideas and think about things. And finally, DaVinci Resolve is now on iPad. If you're not sure what that is, that's a video editor that a lot of professionals and YouTubers here on YouTube use to edit and most importantly, color grade their videos. And the fact that it's now on iPad is really promising. We just need Apple to bring Final Cut over and then we'll finally be done. But these are all really decent apps that are absolutely worth checking out. Okay, I know I've spoken about note taking on the iPad a huge amount on this channel, so I don't want to keep hammering on about it, but if you haven't already, I still think this is one of the iPad's strongest areas where it truly shines as a different product completely. And if you're not giving it a go, you're really missing out. My advice would be to start with Apple Notes because it's genuinely very good right now and it's free and it's built in. But if you're looking at branching out and you need some help navigating which note taking app to dig into, then I of course have a fully updated video about all of the best note taking apps. So I'll link that below as well. Now, iPads aren't just for getting work done and productivity-based tasks. They're also pretty huge for entertainment, and I'm sure a lot of you out there probably already use it to watch a bunch of stuff. But what I will also say is the iPad is capable of some pretty good gaming experiences. Now, I'm not suggesting this is any kind of replacement for a dedicated console because it's not, but the iPad can game. Not only is there a big selection of games on the App Store, but Apple Arcade also has some bangers, which I've really enjoyed. Although I will say it could do with some more titles on there for sure. Some of the games I've enjoyed playing on iPad are Cozy Grove, Final Fantasy VII First Soldier, What the Golf, Dead Cells, Hyperlight Drifter, and Sayonara Wild Hearts, amongst a bunch of other stuff. I would say though, it's definitely worth playing with a controller if you can. Recently, I've been enjoying the 8-bit Do Ultimate controller, which is fantastic for iPad and Switch and Mac and Windows. But if you've got an Xbox controller or a PlayStation one kicking around, then that will connect no problem and it will give you a much more console-like experience. To finish off this video, I did want to mention there's no quicker way to go back to using your laptop or your desktop than to kind of force using an iPad. For some tasks, a laptop or a desktop machine is still better and you should be totally honest with yourself when you hit those walls. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated or you're just going to put the iPad down and never come back to it. Over a year ago when I made this video last time, I did say that the iPad isn't a laptop and a laptop isn't an iPad and that's still pretty much holding true today even if those lines are getting blurrier and blurrier. I think leaning into the iPad's unique accessories and form factor is absolutely the 
best way to get the most out of it. Just enjoy the iPad for being an iPad. And for someone like me, the iPad is still that companion device. It's the sort of thing that I use in conjunction with my desktop, or it's the sort of thing that I can take on lighter days when I know I don't need loads of computing power with me. It's the perfect companion for getting smaller things done or for using specifically with the Apple Pencil for enjoying sketching or taking notes or anything else like that. Anyway, that pretty much rounds up this video and everything that I've learned about using the iPad. I hope you've really enjoyed it. As ever, I will link everything I possibly can below so you can go and check all those things out. And if you think I'm missing anything, then please let me know in the comments below how you're using the iPad to get work done or just for entertainment purposes. I always love to hear what you have to say. And as ever, I will see you all in the next one.